Jonathan, uh, we're as believers, we're people of the Word, right. the, the Bible, and of uh, Scriptures, and so um, that makes it everything that we are. I mean, we we get through the revelation, but there's also we love other books, and mm -hmm. and there are books that influence us, and there's commentaries on the Bible, and so we just like books about other books, right. and so. I want to talk a little bit about what books have influenced you most over your life. Yeah, and, and as we do that, I, I just want to begin with the idea that we're people of the book. As I'm thinking that through, uh, for, for the first almost 1,500 years of the Christian faith, there was very little actual reading going on. The, the priest of the church, of the Catholic church, the Roman Catholic church, that's who did all the preaching and teaching. That's who read the text it came through them yeah. came through them so you got whatever they because as a peasant as a common man likely you were illiterate and could not read yeah. um and then in, in the in the late 1400s you have the invention of the of uh, the printing press and so books are becoming mass produced at this point people begin reading and, and it begins it's trickling it's trickling from the top down to the common folk yeah. and as common people began reading and having access to the scriptures reading really took off and so uh the, the literacy in and of itself was a major player in the protestant reformation and and in who we are today as believers in christ and so yeah, we read the written revelation of God, but we also read other books because we can yeah. and because God uses them. And um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk about some books. Um, you asked about personal books yeah. first, right? Yeah. So, um, so I, got, I brought a couple with me that I just kind of want to talk through. Uh, the, the number one bestseller that we're told behind the Bible, the Bible's number one bestselling book, all time, right? Um, behind that is uh, John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress, John, John Bunyan, 1600s Puritan, uh, was imprisoned for his faith. Uh, I believe it was 11 years he spent in prison, and he wrote this book while in prison. It's what we call allegory. So uh, it, it is fiction, but it's fiction based on truth. And so he basically takes, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does the Christian life look like? And he in he creates this fictitious character, and his name is Christian. Yeah. And he's on this journey. He's a pilgrim, and he is he is he's, he's got a burden, a literal burden on his shoulders After that he's reading carrying. The word, right? Yes, yes. And he is he he leaves, and one of the most fascinating parts right at the beginning, he leaves his family. Yeah. He leaves his wife and his children to trek towards what's called the celestial city, which you and I would know to be heaven. And so he's on his way to that city. And he's walking a path. He's walking a, 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 a path yeah. and he um, he you know he meets all these interesting characters. Um, and uh, you know and, and, and the characters are almost so many of them are characteristics yeah. of sin in, in that we as believers face as we are being sanctified throughout the Christian life. And it's really cool. He, he personifies these sins and gives them characteristics that say, this is what this looks like, but it's a, it's a representation of an aspect of our walk and how we face it, right? Yeah, and, 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 and the thing is, like every, every believer that reads it can identify with the, the lead character Christian at some point on his walk. Yeah. We've been in that situation. We've encountered that person. Um, you know, uh, the at the he goes to a, a city that, that that is the Vanity Fair, and he meets all these interesting characters, which are are basically sins that you and I deal with, and they inf they try to influence him and push him towards certain uh, directions. And sometimes he kind of steers off the path and um, towards the city of destruction yeah. and. It's a fascinating uh, walk that, that that the pilgrim named awesome. Christian takes, and and I I would recommend that for every uh, every believer at at some point in their Christian journey, Pilgrim's Progress. All right, what else? Uh, so C.S. Lewis wrote a book. Uh, C.S. Lewis uh, is best known. So C.S. Lewis is 20th century, um, uh, early 1900s author in in uh, England. He is best known for his Narnia series. Yeah. Uh, the best known for book two of the Narnia series, which is called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. 
it's actually a seven book series, a uh, fantastic uh, fiction. Um, but but he wrote another book called Mere Christianity, and his Mere Christianity is just I mean it, it's it's basic Christianity. It's what does it mean to be a Christian? Yeah. And uh, and C.S. Lewis does a great job with that. I enjoyed this book several years ago. I need to read it again. Um, it's a it's a it's one of those that oftentimes new believers will pick up, or maybe not brand new believers, but maybe in the first few years of your Christian faith, a, a good walk through some some theology, some basic Christian theology. Okay. So, Mere Christianity is a good read. Um, the Valley of Vision. I didn't know about this Valley of Vision until I went to seminary. Uh, this is a book of Puritan prayers. Each prayer is is two pages. Yep. It's it's a it's a left and right page. It's that's it. It's a prayer, um, and that that prayer is um, that prayer is um, uh, written by one of the Puritans, and we don't know which Puritan. They're all anonymous in here. The editor of this took a bunch of Puritan prayers. Did not want the reader to focus on who actually wrote the prayer, but on the prayer itself. Right. The prayers are. Um, categorized by uh, systematically mm -hmm. theologically and so you can turn to certain ones um, and it's it's so rich to sit down and to to read this prayer and pray through this prayer on your own it's just as part of your devotional life okay. yeah I use it devotionally I was gonna say like sure. how you use it um, and then it also opens the question of, of written prayers and how you use those right I, I have mm -hmm. I've used I have read some of these prayers from the pulpit mm -hmm. in, in, in my preaching ministry it's not often the congregation um, needs to learn to listen and pray through written prayers otherwise they're kind of struck by the fact that you're doing that in the first place and trying to figure that out I did it yeah. one time in Sunday school here yeah. in men's Sunday school class and um, it was one of, it, it was it was a little bit odd. It was yeah. a little bit different, yeah. you know. Well, you know, written prayers. We think of liturgy of mm -hmm. the church, and so we often think of high church. So maybe the Episcopal Church or Lutheran Church, um, and we think of responsive readings and things like that. Baptists uh, have, over the past hundred years, have kind of strayed away from high church liturgy type yeah. stuff, and so we're often scared to death if a pastor reads a prayer. Um, but I, from time to time, there, it's and if you do it. As a routine every single week and you're doing it just to do it right. yeah it's an issue but you said use it devotionally I use it devotionally yeah. and I don't do it every day I don't want to be super self-righteous I'm, I'm not um, there'll be months that go by that I, that I don't pick it up and then I'll pick it up and and I'll look at it every day for several weeks yeah. and um, I'll sit there and read a prayer it takes you know maybe 60 seconds um and sometimes it's got some some 16th century language of thee and thou in it that you have to think through these words uh but but you know it's not a bad idea to think occasionally so um <laughs> yeah. yeah so the valley of vision is a great devotional tool